Hello, my name is John Rowley. I'm a Rotator Product Manager at Nelson Irrigation Corporation. Today we are going to discuss rebuilding or repair of the R2000 WF Rotator and the R2000 LP Rotators. In preparation for rebuilding these sprinklers, you need a few tools. We'll go over those now. The first is a 2TN nozzle removal tool. A second tool is the motor removal tool. A third tool you'll need is the cap removal tool. These tools are available through Nelson Irrigation Corporation. It's also helpful to have a small Phillips screwdriver and a half inch PVC coupler in the process of rebuilding. These tools can be found in the rotator performance guide. The part numbers for them are located there. Also, you should secure all of the parts that you might need as part of the rebuilding process. For example, the cap may be needed. The cap can be deformed or it can be broken. If either of those are the case, it should be replaced. The body. The body also might be damaged. It might be deformed. If it's deformed, it should be replaced. The bearing is a part that needs to be replaced if the plate is being replaced. If you're putting new plates on, it's necessary to replace the bearing. The 2TN nozzle should be inspected for damage to the exit point of the nozzle or the entrance point. If there's scratching on, the, on those surfaces of the nozzle, the nozzle should be replaced with a new one. Similarly, the plate. If the plate has damage to the exit point, to the entry point, or to the bearing surface, the bearing surface is right here, if there's damage to those surfaces of the plate, it should be replaced. The diffuser should be inspected for any broken diffuser fingers. If there are any worn or broken diffuser fingers, the diffuser sh should be replaced. We do not recommend replacing broken or worn motors. If that is the case with your sprinklers, it's time to buy a completely new sprinkler. You also, in preparation for rebuilding, should purchase a few of these stainless steel washers. Not necessarily because the old ones will need to be replaced, but just in case there are a few lost in the process of rebuilding. So those are the parts. You want to go ahead and get your parts secured before you begin rebuilding your, or repairing your sprinklers. When you're repairing the sprinklers, the first step is to disassemble the sprinkler. So we'll go through that process now. The first step is to remove the cap. The cap is removed with the cap removal tool and the cap removal tool has two rises on its, in, the, in the center of its clamping area. Those bumps or rises need to be aligned perfectly with the words squeeze on the rotator. So we put those right on those words, those bumps right on those words, and we squeeze lightly and then turn and the cap comes off quite easily. This tool can really save your hands if you're doing a lot of these. You want to have one. The next step in disassembly is to remove the nozzle. The nozzle is removed with the nozzle removal tool. By placing it over the top or the outlet portion of the body, and pressing down, the nozzle will come right out. After the nozzle is removed, remember to inspect it at that point for any damage to the nozzle. If it's damaged, it needs to be thrown away. The next step in disassembly is to remove the motor. This is done with the motor removal tool. You remove the small object in the bottom of the motor removal tool. You want to place the ring of the top of the motor removal tool on your hand such that the center portion of it is more in the palm of your hand while the outer portion of it 
is not in the palm of your hand. So you'll place it on top of the rotator cap assembly, then place that in the palm of your hand in that manner, and the object is to press on the outer edges of the motor removal tool first, and then the center after you feel the motor release. Once you feel that release, the motor can be pushed on out or pulled on out. The diffuser can be removed and inspected for damage. If there's a broken diffuser, discard the diffuser and replace it with a new one. The washer can then be removed as well. Then with the motor removed from the cap, the plate and the motor pull apart quite easily. You can just grip the two pieces with your fingers and pull them apart. So that completes the disassembly of the rotator. Now we'll talk about reassembling the rotator. But before we do that, we, we need to determine whether or not there's a groove worn in the bottom or the bearing surface of the plate right here. If you find a groove there, the plate needs to be replaced. And if the plate needs to be replaced, then the bearing must be replaced also. So let's just um, assume that in this case we are replacing the plate and the bearing. That means the old bearing needs to be removed. To remove the old bearing, take a small Phillips screwdriver and place it inside the body, about like this. Then pry up against the bearing and it'll pop it out for you. That removes the bearing. With the R2000 WF or LP completely disassembled, we can now begin the assembly process. We'll start with the body. First inspect the body and make sure that it isn't out of shape or broken in any way. We'll assume in this case that the bearing needs to be replaced. The bearing should always be inspected, particularly the inside of the bearing should be inspected for any wear or any notches or damage. If there's any damage or notches in the inside of that bearing, it should be replaced. So we'll start by assembling a new bearing into the body we want to take the notches in the top of the bearing and align them with the ridges that are in the inside of the body. So with place the bearing in the body with those notches and ridges lined up with each other, then place the body on, the t on a table and use a half inch coupler to place over the top of the bearing and press down. It doesn't take a lot of force and you'll feel it snap into position. With the bearing installed, we now install a nozzle. If the nozzle is damaged, particularly on the inside of the nozzle or on the exit point of the nozzle, it needs to be replaced. We'll put a new nozzle in the sprinkler by placing the outlet side of the nozzle down into the sprinkler like that. And then we'll use the nozzle removal tool over the over at the top of the inlet of the sprinkler and press downward. It takes just a slight press to seat that nozzle into position. The next step will be to assemble the cap assembly. First step is to inspect the cap and make sure it's not misshaped or broken in any, any way. If it's in good condition, then we will next Take a diffuser, we'll inspect the diffuser for wear or any broken diffusers. If it's worn or broken, it needs to be replaced. Place the diffuser in the cap with the diffuser fingers facing up, like this. Then you'll take the motor and place the washer over the motor like this. Then you'll take the motor and press it down through the cap, like so. Then take the bottom portion of the motor removal tool. It has a hole in the top of it, in the center of it. Place that hole over the shaft of the motor and use your fingers to snap the motor into position like that. The next step is to inspect the plate. The plate needs to be inspected carefully. Expe inspect the exit point for damage, the entry point for damage, and inspect the bearing surface of the plate right here for any grooves. 
If there's any damage or a groove worn into the bearing surface of the plate, the plate needs to be replaced. Again, if you're replacing the plate, then the bearing right here needs to be replaced as well. With a good plate or a new plate, um, you can begin assembly. This part is very critical. If it's not assembled correctly, the sprinkler will stall. The end of the shaft of the motor has flats on it, and the top of the hub of the plate also has a flatted area. Those flats need to be aligned or parallel when you push the plate onto the motor. So I'll align those flats and then push the plate onto the motor. You'll fill two easy snaps as that pushes together and that'll tell you you know that you have the plate properly assembled onto the shaft of the motor. With the plate assembled onto the cap assembly, the cap assembly is now complete and the cap assembly can be assembled to the body which has a nozzle installed in it. You'll place those on top of each other and just twist them together. That completes the reassembly of or repair of an R2000WF or R2000LP.